Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Philippines and welcome back to another installment of my ongoing series, Med School Deep Dive, the series where I interview medical students from different parts of the Philippines about their experiences at their respective medical schools. In this installment, I interview Doc Ahrens, who's a graduate of the Mindanao State University College of Medicine. But before we start this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does support the channel. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. So Doc, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Hi everyone, I'm Arans J. Doc Dossil. I'm a medical intern from Northern Mindanao Medical Center from Cagayan de Oro City. So I graduated medical school from MSU College of Medicine, Iligan City. And I graduated my undergrad from Mindanao State University General Santos, um, BS Biology last 2016. Also. So to kick things off, Aaron, so uh, why did you decide to pursue your medical education in MSU? I pursued my medical school in MSU because, of course, I'm from med uh, MSU also, though from Jensan. And I was really searching for a uh, for an affordable medical school. And in the entire Philippines, what I've um, known which is affordable is MSU. So that is why I chose MSU when um, I'm trying to search for uh, my medical school. Okay, yeah. Like I've seen in my research, you guys receive stipend above from CHED. You're part of the scholarship program. Yes, um, all students from MSU receive um, stipend from CHED and also um, full scholarship, I believe. But for me, I am under the um, Department of Health scholarship for Doctor uh, Doctor to the Barrio program. So, how would you describe your the academic experience of being a student at MSU? Like, what's the curriculum like? Because uh, you know, there's there are different area, there are different modes of teaching uh, with the medical schools here in the Philippines. There's the, the, the traditional method. There's the organ system integrated, and then there's the uh, problem-based learning. So where along that spectrum does MSU fall in? So the MSU College of Medicine is problem-based learning, so PBL. Then what we do is we are presented with um, case scenarios or problems. Then we search for answers or solutions with that specific case scenario. So we do small group discussions. Then through that, we correlate it with the lectures from our um, consultants also. So to my understanding, the PBL uh, curriculum isn't very lecture heavy. So is, am I right? So like more of it is self-directed learning. Yes, exactly. It's a student-directed learning. So you yourself as a student will look for the answers, will read the book, then it's the student to decide um, what topics are you going to read. So you're going to list your learning issues for that specific topic, then look for the answers that are related to your cases that are being presented during the small group discussions or what we call the PBL discussions. Given that learning structure, how often are the, the major exams in MSU? Okay, so since we are PBL and our curriculum is divided per organ systems, so we have only one exam per uh, module, so we call it module. Um, for example, in GI, um, that's one module, and we only have one uh, major exam for that module. So that's our modular exam. And in modular exam, we also have the laboratory and the clinical so that's only one. So if you fail during that exam, then you have to retake it for at most three times. Then after that, if you fail, then that would be a ground for deliberation, I believe. How would you describe the teaching philosophy of your school? I've, you kind of alluded it to it er earlier on based on your description of what the PBL curriculum is like. Can you just put it to words like how if, if the school is like more hands-on or are they more hands-off in their approach to teaching you guys? Okay, so in MSU.com, what we do is it's mostly us students be uh, trying to, to learn. So we only have few lectures and most of the basics to us to um, read. Okay, so what is the role of the professor? Are they just there to clarify if you have any like questions based on what you read in the book? Yeah, uh, during the PBL sessions, we have our, our doctors um, guiding us in our discussion. And then if we have questions, they then they answer the questions. And if we have um, clarifications, for example, during the um, PBL, sec uh, PBL session, then it's their job to um, provide us the answers. But mostly, um, it's the students pa rin ang nagahanap for the answers. Okay, so Aris, like during your time uh, before you became a postgraduate 
uh, intern. Did MSU provide you any opportunities to initiate your own additional learning, such as like being able to do research or have the uh, opportunity to do clinical rotations abroad? We don't have that kind, but we have community medicine, and it's one of the flagship of MSU community medicine, wherein we we were exposed to the community, to our chosen community for four years. So that's starting from our first year. So I guess that's the extension part of our learning to be immersed in a community where we can learn their um, their way of lives, then also to address their problems related to, um, to health and also to some factors that are, of course, related to their um, health problems and health status of their family and the community as a whole. At the time we're filming this, it's March 15, which marks the one-year anniversary of our quarantine here in the Philippines. So have you faced any specific challenges in preparing for boards in light of this pandemic looming over us? Yes, actually, um, it's very hard um, reviewing for the board exam uh, in this kind of setting. Like more, uh, there's no much pressure to 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 keep up with the you know to keep up with the with the review. So mostly, natamad kailang kanon. Okay, so Doc, you mentioned um, you've you've had a hard time like maintaining the motivation to continue studying hard because of the ongoing pandemic. So what are the, some of the things you've done to try and overcome these challenges? Um, well, for me, I just tried to um, develop my own discipline, time management, and communicating with my classmates and my fellow PJIs, asking of the things they have already learned and checking out if I'm at par with their um, learnings already or, or not. And then also, um, trying to study also the things that I need to study in terms of the um, reviewers that are given for, uh, given to us by our, re our review center. Moving on a month to more uh, general advice. So now that you're at the tail end now of your first five years of your medical training, at the end of your medical education, uh, what advice can you give to people still currently in medical school and those aspiring to enter medical school. To those who are already in medical school and still surviving medical school, so just um, keep working hard and of course, um, always remember your um, inspirations because they were the ones um, that are going to make uh, to motivate you to finish and um, to achieve what you uh, what you want to achieve in life. And also to those who are still planning to go to medical school. Um, well, um, just dream big and of course, um, there is a great future um, waiting for you ahead. So that's it. Good luck for those who are trying. And um, we really need a lot of doctors this time. So um, to those who are aspiring to be med medical doctors, I'm encouraging you to pursue, uh, to pursue your dreams because um, we need doctors, especially during this pandemic. How would you describe the campus culture in MSU? It's like uh, what do you describe as being part of the student body there? The, the MSU Com family is only um, very small. So we are um, located in Iligan City and we only have one building. Then, uh, But we are actually um, connect, um, connected with uh, um, MSU um, Marawi, the main campus. So what we have in our um, campus is only the College of Medicine and we are only um, composed of few students. I think for every year, at most, um, 90 students. So it's just a very small family for us with our doctors and the staff of the college. Given that you're a small school, is there is there much opportunity to have extracurriculars? Because they're, they're lar the larger schools, like they're, they have a lot of, most of the larger schools have a lot of orgs that students can join. So given you have a small student body, what extracurricular opportunities do students there have to join? I think for for our college, um, we don't have a lot of extracurricular activities except for the um, except for the um, palakasan or the intramurals that we are doing. Um, there are no um, other organizations except for the um, student publication and the organization for the community medicine and um, yeah, that's it. So. Um, no much um, um, extracurricular activities except for the days that are 
um, allotted for our palakasan. Uh, having been a medical student at MSU for four years, uh, what's one thing that you really loved about the school? Um, what I really learned to love about the school is that um, it's PBL and it's student-directed um, learning. So as for me, I, uh, I like it because it hones you to be independent, to be inquisitive as a doctor. By the student-directed learning, I learned how to, to prioritize my um, the things that I need to learn and the and the things that I need to solve for my patient. So, I guess that's the, the most important thing in uh, MSU Com, and that's the most important thing also that the college is trying to um, develop in the students to be um, independent and inquisitive and um, develop your own um, strategy. So, as my follow-up question to that, Aaron, is like. What's something about the school that you wish they'd add for future students? That you wish that you had while you were a stu still a student there? Okay, so I think um, what we needed also in our school is the enough um, laboratory exposure. We don't have cadaver, uh, cadaver kasi in our school, so we, we only rely on reading books and um, looking at pictures. So I guess with, with that um, kind of facility, I think that would further the learning of the students. Before we end this interview, uh, Aaron, is there anything you'd like to promote? Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, follow me on my Instagram account at Aaron at Aaron Strade, and it, um, follow me on my Facebook account, Aaron Strade Okay, so if any of you guys are interested in following Doc Aaron's social media, I'll leave links to his uh, social media accounts in the description. So thank you, Doc Arons, for taking part in this interview, and I wish you the best of luck in your preparation for the boards. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you'd like to learn more about the different medical schools here in the Philippines, check out the full med school deep dive playlist here. And if you'd like to learn on how you can apply to these med schools, check out this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.